Hello everybody and welcome back to Jake's RC Stuff and as you can tell I'm not in my normal recording location but this desk has been freed from clutter and then I've recluttered it again. Now, do any of you have an idea what this could possibly be? We've got some white long range USB adapters, there's one actually out of the box for you to have a look at. We have two SanDisk micro SD cards, we have some Raspberry Pis and we have a camera, yes. I have decided after seeing the very basic information I've seen and the fact that it exists and that's about it, the DJI Digital H uh, HD FPV gubbins, I decided let's try and make a cheaper one. So if you don't know there's two open source projects, now I'm not usually into open source projects, I'll be completely honest with you because they never really work very well, <coughs> I know, um, or oh, I don't get on with them anyway, <coughs> I know. Apologies for traffic noises, there's windows open everywhere, and I mean actual windows, not computers. But, um, so we'll go over what we've got here. Um, so there's there's two open source products, as I say, one's called Easy Wi-Fi Broadcasting, and the other one, which is an offshoot of that, is called Open HD. Oh, HD Open? Open HD, I think. They'll be both linked in the description. They're both very similar. Open HD is the newer version, basically, of what's going on here. So... All of this was bought on Amazon, on Amazon Prime, and it came the next day. So to go through everything, um, basically the way that this works is that you have an Air Pi and a Ground Pi because of the Raspberry Pis. Because these are actually bi-directional, you can have your control and your video on the same setup. I'm just going to stick with video for now, if everything goes well, maybe I will do control for it as well. But for now it's just going to be video. Um, so, in terms of... Um, what you have, so as I say, you have an air pie and a ground pie. Um, air pie being what goes in your playing ground pie, ironically, is what stays on the ground. So, if I sort of split these up into how that they would work, that's roughly it. I also have a Raspberry Pi too that I can't actually find other than the box, although apparently they're made in the UK. Are these made in the UK? Probably not, because they don't say. Oh, no, made in the UK, so people who care about that are very happy. Possibly some of the only uh, FPV kit you can get that's built in the UK. Um, but, just to go over what happens. So, in the plane, you have a camera. So the, you can use any Raspberry Pi camera as far as I can see. This is one that's a little, born, little bit more FPV like. So it has a more standard FPV lens. Um, you can also swap out for more lenses of course. Uh, the only other thing that's there are some ribbon cables, so nothing that important. This then plugs into a Raspberry Pi. Now I have two different types of pie because you can never have too many pies we have the one that's sort of the classic size which apparently comes in a bag as well as a box for some whatever you call it this is like a set of an anti-static bag they use cardboard for eco-friendliness possibly so this is a Raspberry Pi 3 whoops, I've just chucked over there um, so this you have to have one of these on the ground, um, but you can have one of these in the air, or you can have one of these Raspberry Pi Zeros. Now I got the starter kit because it was the cheapest. The Raspberry Pi 3s are 35, these are 20. Basically, a load of jobs that you don't need. And then this, oh wow, this is actually a lot smaller. So there is the Pi Zero. Now, these in theory both work. The only problem is that this is a much lower grade processor than this. Also, that's a micro SD card. Have I fucked up, ladies and gentlemen? I have fucked up. No, no, I haven't. I got micro SD cards. That's fine. I thought I got standard size for it then. Um, so that's a Broadcom, that processor. And this is a Elfida. Basically, that's like 1.4 and a gig, and that's 1 gig and half a gig of RAM. Uh, so that that was obviously a lot smaller. I mean, if I compare it to 
a iPhone 10, um, just just like a size scale. Um, I haven't got my wallet on me. I'll show you the back of a credit card or something, or a key card. Um, so you can get them with the pins already done. Um, there's two different ways of powering this. So it has to be five volts. You can either power it from soldering on a couple of these pins on the back, the USB power in, or you can do it from a couple of these pins as well on here. Probably gonna do it through those pins on both of them. Even this one doesn't have the pins soldered on yet. So get a case for it. Some cables and some pins and stuff. None of which I'm really going to use, but it's cheaper than buying this on its own. Strangely enough. Um, so that's that. If anybody's interested. Now, even on standard settings, this is maxed out to about 75% from what I've read on the uh, GitHub page. So this doesn't work properly, that's why I've got this second one because um, the other one, this one, is on the ground um, the only other things that you've got of course is a SD card now supposedly to get this working first up before you sort of change settings and things it should be as simple as flashing this card, putting it in here, powering it up obviously you've got to solder the wires on what I'm probably going to do to begin with, just in case I decide to return these if this all doesn't work is power it via USB but they recommend when it's in a plane to get rid of as many USB connections as possible because they're all failure points or coming loose points or anything like that. Now the card I have here is a 16 gig uh, all singing or dancing one. And the reason why I got these is because they were the cheapest one I could find without scrolling through massive amounts of pages because you only need like a 2 gig card really. These are 16. Um, but the other thing I thought is if these, if I don't end up using these for this project, the 16 gig cards are actually still useful. And also, um, for the ground station, it can actually DVR automatically what you're recording. So having a 16 car gig card, you can put it, like basically it stores it on the card then it saves it permanently to a USB stick or a USB hard drive, is my understanding of it. But the more buffer storage you have, um, the better. So it's, just, it's a 98 megabit per second card, so it's like a few year old hard drive, has been a machine for two or three years, uh, so it's not awful, um, as I say, two gig card minimum, um, but to be honest with you, I mean, these are like £5.50, um, and of course the last thing are these Alpha Networks uh, long range USB adapter, now if you go onto those pages, you'll see it recommends loads of different Wi-Fi adapters, and that's the reason I chose this one, the AWUS 036 NHA. Very catchy name, you know, you've got Florence, you've got Mary, and then you've got the AW blah 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 blah. Basically, um, they have to be on the list that's there. This is the one that they kind of recommend because you can another reason why I like this one, for example, is the fact you can take the aerial off and experiment with other aerials. It's, they're not quite as important as the analog stuff to having the uh, they're like clover leaves and things like that, but I can always give a clover leaf a try on this, I suppose. Um, now, so the reason why I have three is because you can set up diversity. So you can have up to two in the plane, and I think two of some type and four of another on the ground. What I'm doing is I'm going to have one in the plane and two on the ground. That's my eventual idea. I think it's like 15 quid each, so they're fairly inexpensive. Um, so, yeah, just hit the camera with the thing bob there. Um, in the end we would decase these and actually solder the wires onto this USB plug. It comes with USB plugs, it comes with stickers in the box. This is in the unboxing. There's a sticker in the box. The USB cable must be in the big Amazon box to get all this out of. Uh, but yeah, I ordered this more or less all at the same time and there was five, I think, different Amazon packages turned up. Don't know why I couldn't have all put it in one box, but never mind. Um, but yeah, so I mean... You might be thinking all this and thinking, like I do with some of these things, like, good God, I haven't got the time to fart about with this. Let me go out and buy DJI's thing with Bob or Konex or whatever. But supposedly, and from the demos I have seen, it all just clips together, other than the soldering of the power leads when you're ready to actually put this in a model. And, um, you just flash the, um, SD card, put it in, power it up, and it works. Now, obviously, if you want to change features, add extra power, extra video quality, things like that. You can fiddle around with a text file. It's just as easy as plugging the SD card into a computer again and editing that text file. But supposedly that should be the hardest thing. I'm a computer guy, so I should be able to work out how to flash that fairly easy. And as I got a decent... Because the normal Pi cameras are very small lens. 
This also has an IR blaster on it. Um, so, this should all be relatively good news, and it has screws on the back, so we could put this on if I want to. I'm also kind of excited because this is actually going to bring back um, a plane that was my second ever FPV plane, not my exact one, um, because that one got stolen. That'll be a story for one day on the channel, I'm sure, if I haven't already told it. Um, the story of how my insert plane name here got stolen, if I haven't told it already. Um, if I have, it'll be in the description. Um, but um, a friend of mine, where his was actually his third ever FPV plane, he had an easy star, then an easy glider, and then this. Um, he gave it me and basically said, when you wreck it, give me the servos back. Um, and I flew it a few times, it's mid-air with his own planes, which is quite funny. Um, like, like getting mid-aired with that one's replacement. Um, but I'm going to put that back together and sort of put the new latest gubbins in it because it still has an FY21. I have a 41 on the way from Hobby King at the minute for it because I, I really need two because I need one for another plane or a few planes I have in boxes. But I'm trying to save a bit of cash and pay off some credit cards. Uh, but this is like a fun project. And another thing as well is when you work it out, like this is about £20. These are £15. And these, depending on what you get, are either £20 or £35. So you're looking at what's like £70, which if you think about it, if you buy the bought a run cam, a decent video transmitter, especially if you're going for definitely one that isn't 1.3, but also definitely is. Um, you know, by the time you've got that and then an aerial and things like that, I know, that I know I'm probably going to replace the aerial on here. It's not that much more expensive, and if it's HD and it works really well, then it's going to be interesting. So from the setup I can see, you can either do 1080p 30 or 720 60fps, so it's kind of like Konex level, from my understanding. But it's it's not um, quite... Come on, insert brain. Um, DJI level. But the guy that originally made Easy Wi-Fi Broadcast did build a setup that uses the NVIDIA Little Boys or whatever the call, I can't remember the name of them but he managed to actually get 4K playback at 30fps and I presume you can get 1080p60 and things like that um, through one of them. Now they basically replaced the Pi, they're about the same size as a Pi especially if you take the massive heat sink that come on the NVIDIA ones but they're about $90. So it is a lot more expensive setup, probably a lot less expensive than the DJI stuff um, but you never know, maybe if all this goes well then we can get one of them for like a super fancy one. I'm not sure if I'd need more powerful because they're only 150 megabits. But to be fair, the speed doesn't matter, it's the distance. These are the equivalent of 350 milliwatts that I will, of course, only use at 25. Um, but yeah, so this is all my stuff. I'm going to put it all back in a box and sort of nail it all together and see if we get anything out of it. But this is sort of my first overview of this little. Um, HD digital FPV on a budget and uh, I will update you as this goes along so thank you for watching, see you all in the next one bye bye